Well, welcome everyone to this episode of Stories for Healing. Um, this is a series that's been running now since the end of October. And uh, I'm very pleased to say um, that it's reaching a lot of people and that storytellers from around the world are signing up to tell. I'm, I, this was just an idea that came on a dark Halloween night as to what are we going to do? And it seems like the idea of telling stories for healing uh, about reconciliation, not about who's the good guy and who's the bad guy, um, is really, really what we all need right now. Um, so, so as I say, we've we've got storytellers from all around the world, uh, even including Texas. So uh, today, today we're very pleased to be able to have David Thompson tell us a story. David, please tell us a story. Okay. Hey, sounds like a plan, Jim. Thanks a lot. Hello, everyone. My name is David Thompson. I live in Austin, Texas, and I'm also a voluntary end of life doula, which means I a, a, accompany those who are actively dying, which is an odd term, actively dying. But anyway, the story I'm going to tell you today, I have told at many a memorial, many a funeral, uh, held hands of those who are dying, and I've told this story to help alleviate any fears because we find in our country particularly the word death or die or dead is almost taboo so i would like to bring this in and hope it will bring some help and some healing and some joy to those who are experiencing this transition so the story i'm going to tell is how death came into the world uh it's an original story and I have it based on some uh, Slavic mythology characters. So here we go. And in that time before now, before your ancestors, ancestors, ancestors' memories, when the world was young and the gods spoke in deep voices, there was no death, for the gods had banished death across the horizon, beyond. However, the gods in their naivete had said nothing about eternal youth. So the seasons passed, the months passed, the days, the weeks, the years, and everything, plants and animals and people, even the very inanimate objects like rocks and mountains began to age and wither and wither and wither. They called out to the gods, give us release. So, Matir Zemnia Soria, moist mother earth, she upon whose very breasts we walk, called a council of the gods. And after deliberation, it was decided to send the divine twins beyond the horizon, beyond the beyond, to bring death back into the world. The twins set off and they journeyed and journeyed and journeyed. And soon it was, they came to that very point, that very line where they stepped over. All was green and quiet and silent and peaceful and beautiful. The twins looked around and they saw the path that they were to take. So they journeyed and journeyed and journeyed. And there, in the distance, they saw a dacha, a wooden hut, beautiful, quiet, soft, inviting. And this must be there. It must be where death is. So they approached the dacha. They went to the door. And they knocked three times. A voice came from inside. 
Who is there? Oh, it is us, the twins. We have been sent to bring you back into the world. By whose authority? By the council of the gods. Go away. And they waited. They stood a week and a day, three months and a year. And again, they knocked three times. And a voice came from inside. Who is there? It is us, the twins. We have been sent to bring you back into the world. By whose authority? By, uh, by Matir Zemya Soya, moist mother earth, she upon whose very breasts we walk. Go away. And again they stood and waited. A year and a day, three months and a season. And again they knocked three times. And again, a voice came from inside. Who is there? Um, it is us, the twins. We have been sent to bring you back into the world. By whose authority? by all of those seeking release from age and pain and suffering. At that very moment, the door to the dacha opens so silently and death in all of his beauty and gentleness, step forth. And taking one arm, he gathered up half of those seeking relief and brought them to his chest. And with the other arm, he got the rest seeking release and brought them to his chest. And he held them in joy. And he held him in love and he kissed each one. And from there he flung them to the sky where they became the stars that looked down on us in love and compassion. Speak and remember. And that's my story. Oh, marvelous. Thank you so much. Yeah, as we've, as we know, uh, I also am an end of life doula and I very, very much appreciate that, uh, that story. It's a beautiful story. Thank you. Um, now you, this came, it's an original story, but it's based on, on other material, obviously that you've, can you tell me a little bit about the culture that that, that, well, that comes from? I'll do my best. <laughs> I'll do my best. I am half Russian on my okay. mother's side. So we had a lot of stories from the mother country, if you will. Mm -hmm. And Matir Zemya Soya, moist mother earth. She is the great goddess. She is she upon whose very breasts we right. walk. And people, and I to today, I still do it. When we make a promise or take an oath. We take some of the dirt from the ground 
Uh-huh. And we make that oath in her name. Uh-huh. I swear by Mother Earth, yeah. which is one of those totally unbreakable. Right, right. Right. And another thing is the Council of the Gods. Um, Slavic mythology has never been really written down. Mm-hmm. So there's all sorts of the gods of the winds and the gods of the morning star, the evening star, uh, the gods of the sun, or actually it's the goddess of the sun because the sun uh-huh. is feminine and the earth is masculine. Well, it depends on what or part not, of yeah. Russia <laughs> you're at, you know, whatever. And um, so this sort of came to me as an inspiration. Gotcha. With my work with the dying, I work with the dying homeless, ah. which is an incredible experience, sure. incredible experience. Sure. For these are people who have no family, so to speak. Yeah. So I become their family. So yeah. and they have some incredible stories themselves. I'm sure. And this came to me, this story came to me several years ago when I first started working with the dying homeless. And it's one of those instant inspirations, shall yeah, we yeah, say. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I just started telling it. And basically, my whole approach is the story tells itself. Yeah. You are just a vehicle to be heard. And I told this yeah. first time to a dear, dear man who was dying and I was holding his hand because he had the most incredible uh, history himself. He had been a fisherman in the Bering Straits and all oh, the stories he could tell. And he said, I'm afraid. And I said, okay, I'm with you. I'm here. Let me tell you a story. And it's just one of these that came out moments yes. <laughs> you know <Yeah. clears throat> and since then i've used this story many many times in the hospice in memorials in funerals and things like that and people really really appreciate it I mean, oh, I've had, I, can, I can imagine i've had i did i told the story at the, the memorial service for one of my friends her wife had died and her wife was from india and we all know about the the whole culture of storytelling within India. So they were there. I tell the story. And afterwards, the whole service was over with. The mother came up and she took her hands and she did this. Which in, you know, this is you salute the person who is superior to you. Mm-hmm. And I went, oh, mercy. <laughs> and she thanked me so much and gave me a hug so it's one of these that will cross everything well i i want to thank you very much david for a wonderful story and a wonderful telling um remember friends we're doing this every weekday um you can find these videos if you're if you like to scroll through Facebook to find them. You can find the old ones there, or you can go over to YouTube, and they're all being archived there as well. Um, and remember, uh, not only do let people know about it, but more importantly, tell stories to each other. Tell stories with your heart open and their hearts open. And you know what? I think uh, you'll find that each of us is healed in the process, both the teller and the listener. Um, so again. Thank you very much, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.